Hi, I'm Matt Williams and welcome to Soil Lab. We're wrapping up our growing season here in the PNW and I wanted to share the results of a season long seven month study that we've done. What we did is we took a homeowner's lawn and we split it in half. And all season long, half of that lawn, we bagged the clippings and the other half we mulched the clippings. Monthly, we took five soil samples from each half of the lawn and shipped them off to the testing lab. That gave us a little over a thousand data points to analyze. So for as much time as I spent in the field pulling soil samples, I spent about 10 times as much time analyzing this data and summarizing it. And that's what I'll be presenting to you today. Well, why did we do this study? Well, we may have heard or been told that there were nutritional benefits uh, for our soil if we were to mulch those clippings. And that's what we're trying to prove or disprove in this study. This homeowner treated the whole lawn the same, meaning that it was irrigated uh, the same on both sides, the bag side and the mulch side, and he irrigated based on ET or evapotranspiration rates, only replacing about 80% of what was lost, maintaining a good moist soil, but avoiding dry spots and avoiding anaerobic or saturated conditions as well. Additionally, he fertilized the entire lawn the same and as he normally would have. In March, before the first mowing, he did a very light thatching. And I want you to remember that we're gonna come back to talking about thatch buildup uh, at the end of today's conversation. So as I mentioned, he fertilized the whole lawn the same. Let's go ahead and look at some of those fertilizer totals for the season. He applied four pounds of nitrogen per thousand square feet on this lawn. Most all of that nitrogen, there were two different products, but most all that nitrogen uh, was in a slow release coated form. He also applied about a quarter of a pound of phosphorus per thousand square feet, about a pound and a half of potassium per thousand, and just over two pounds of sulfur per thousand. Also to maintain that deep green color in his lawn, he applied a pound and a half of iron per thousand square feet. Now, in terms of the forms, he really just used two different fertilizer products. For his nitrogen source, it was all a coated slow release fertilizer. So with these fertilizer inputs all being the same, let's go ahead and talk about the differences that we saw when we just varied mulched versus bagged clippings. So what did we learn? Overall, we learned that there were really no differences when we compared the beginning of the season to the end of the season. Um, and that's true for nitrate, ammonium, boron, copper, magnesium, sodium, phosphorus, and zinc. So again, start of the study, the end of the study, there were no differences in any of those nutrients. Kind of a through line though, was the nitrate and ammonium, so total nitrogen, as well as sulfur, that trended downward through the season for the bagged and the mulch. So again, the plants and microbes were taking more nitrogen and sulfur throughout the growing season than this homeowner was supplying. What else did we learn? For several of our micronutrients, boron, copper in particular, those trended up through the growing season. So more of those were being supplied through fertility products or through natural mineralization um, than was being taken up by the plants. The same would be said for magnesium and phosphorus as well. Those slightly trended up for both the bagged and the mulch treatments through the course of the whole study. Now, we did see significant differences from the beginning of the study to the end of the study, but really just in three of our nutrients, which was a little surprising to me to be honest, but those differences we found were for calcium, iron, and manganese, and we'll look at those shortly. Um, in terms of soil pH, something that we often get asked about, we didn't see any significant changes in pH throughout the study. It was about neutral to start, and it stayed really near neutral throughout the study with some slight 0.1 to 0.2 uh, differences throughout the study. And that's pretty typical to see your pH change throughout a growing season, largely because of ammonium fertilizers being applied, sulfur being applied, uh, as well as irrigation water being applied. So that was the kind of what did we learn at the 10,000 foot view from the beginning of the study to the end of the study. But as we dove into those thousand plus data points, what we found is that there was some in season differences, especially between months one and three, when we saw our most active plant growth for the season. 
So within the season in months one through, through three, we saw lower uh, phosphorus and potassium availability in the bagged versus the mulched. So again, we saw less potassium and phosphorus availability in the bagged side of the yard versus the mulch side of the yard. Why is that? Well, we think that sharp reduction in both phosphorus and potassium that we saw in months one to three is likely linked to our most rapid periods of plant growth and development within the season. As that plant growth slowed down in our region through midsummer, we saw that general trend and increase in both our mulched and bagged treatments. So we did see within season differences of FOSS and potassium, but when we just looked at months one through seven, beginning and into the growing season, there weren't really any differences there. Where we did see significant differences across the growing season was again in calcium, iron, and manganese. So a macronutrient and a couple of our micronutrients or trace elements. Now, I'm not trying to put too confusing of a chart in front of us, so let's talk about what we're seeing here. I looked at a percent change from the beginning of the season to the end of the growing season for each of these nutrients. And zero is gonna be our baseline. So zero, that, at that point, that would just mean there's no change. So let's just focus in first on calcium. On calcium, we see our bagged really didn't change at all. Um, there was a 0.1% positive change in the bagged. So that just tells me a little bit of calcium was naturally released from our soil. But on our mulched um, treatment, on the mulched side of the yard, we saw a 14% increase in calcium. So that mulched side of the yard produced more calcium. And you know, to me that makes a little bit of sense. And why does that make sense? Well, calcium we know builds strong bones. And so it, just like in us, in the plant, it builds cell walls. And so when we put those leaves and that stem material back into the soil, we'd expect for it to stay there. And I think that's what we're seeing. So we did see that 14% increase in calcium. Now the really interesting one I thought was the iron. And so with iron, we saw a 58% reduction in iron in the bag side of the lawn versus the mulch side where we actually saw a small uh, but significant increase of 5%. We saw a very similar trend with the manganese where we saw a 65% reduction in manganese in the bag clippings and a 23% increase on the mulch side of that lawn. So for these three elements in particular, the way that this homeowner was managing, we saw increases in calcium, um, iron and manganese with the mulch side, and we really only saw significant decreases from bagging of those two micronutrients, iron and manganese. Everything else trended pretty similarly, whether it was bagged or mulched. So what were some of the takeaways that we had at the end of this study? Well, the first one is that across a whole season, we really didn't see a significant difference in available nutrients except for those three that I just mentioned, calcium, iron, and manganese. Um, really, it's just a put and take. What you're putting out, plants are taking up. Um, we also, you know, with the nitrogen in particular, might have saw some immobilization because of the higher levels of thatch. Uh, I mentioned there was a light thatching at the middle, at the beginning of the season, uh, but this homeowner did have pretty significant uh, thatch buildup, but it was the same whether it was uh, on the mulched or the bagged side of the lawn. Uh, when we have higher levels of thatch, those microorganisms that are breaking that thatch down actually can consume some of the nitrogen or nitrate um, that's, that's mineralized from those grass clippings breaking down so they have enough nitrogen to break down that high carbon thatch. So maybe some of that nitrogen that was mineralized or yielded from the breakdown of the grass clippings was simply consumed by the microorganisms so they could break down some thatch. Again, no visual differences in the thatch from one side of the yard to the other. When comparing one side of the yard to the other, another observation we made every month was just turf grass quality. We really didn't see any notable turf grass quality differences from the bagged or the mulch side of the lawn. So when it comes down to it, I think it's good to keep our organic material on site, but whether you bag or mulch those clippings in the lawn, it didn't seem to make a significant nutritional difference for most elements or nutrients. 
Now, let's look at what the homeowner's plan is based on some of those soil test results and some of our observations. So the very first thing is there was significant thatch buildup in this yard on both the bagged and mulch side of the lawn. So where he did a very light thatch in March this year, he's gonna do an exceptionally aggressive dethatching uh, this next spring. Really try to remove a lot of that thatch material to make sure we're getting good penetration of our fertilizer granules, um, as well as maybe mitigating that potential immobilization or the, new, the microbes stealing some of that nitrogen, if you will. So aggressive thatch early spring is gonna be very important for this homeowner. I think it's also notable to see where these nutrients land in terms of the optimal range. Now, I mentioned that this homeowner used two different fertilizer sources, both with slow release nitrogen uh, or coated nitrogen products. You'll see that the nitrogen was consider considered suboptimal or below that optimal range. We see that pretty often when we use coated slow release products. There's a lot of nitrogen that's yet to be made available. So that certainly could be a function but he's likely gonna increase his nitrogen fertility, but also vary his nitrogen sources a little bit to provide a little bit more immediately available nitrogen throughout that growing season. Something else that's notable is that there's a surplus of phosphorus in this lawn. So there's more available phosphorus than this turf grass needs. So next season, he'll be eliminating phosphorus from his fertility program. Other additions would be uh, potassium, that's in that optimal range, just gonna stay consistent with the potassium in terms of his fertility rates. And similar to the nitrogen, the sulfur was a bit low. And so we're going to go ahead and increase the sulfur rates as well, try to creep those up closer to that optimal range, and then use fertilizer products that contain a micronutrient blend, specifically of zinc, copper, and boron to help drive those micronutrients up as well. So just to reiterate, at the end of the day, what did we learn? Well, we learned that at this homeowner's lawn in the Pacific Northwest, whether it was bagged or mulch, there really weren't that significant of nutrient differences from the beginning to the end of the season, except for those three that we mentioned, which were calcium, iron, and manganese. So whether you're mulching your clippings or bagging your clippings, you'll probably see some differences within the season, but not significant differences across the season. So when it comes down to bagging or mulching, this is gonna be personal preference. A lot of homeowners like to bag those clippings and uh, compost them on site. That keeps a little cleaner lawn oftentimes, and then gives you a really great nitrogen source for that compost pile. Maybe you like to mulch them and feed that microbial life in the soil a little bit more. Um, is thatch accumulation a concern in that, in that instance? It wasn't within this one growing season, but maybe across years it would be. One thing to manage though is your thatch, and that's something that this homeowner is gonna need to attack starting next spring. So we took this whole season to get data and analyze it, and we hope that this data helps drive decisions in your lawn, maybe even your garden. If so, please like, subscribe, and I'll see you in the lab.